Or you could get like a fly swatter. No, you should just hit those little frequency things. It's just, it's just like funny how, you know, <laughs> different teachers <laughs> evolve. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so here's the plan for today. There's a lot of people gone, and uh, some of you are kind of struggling with this whole thing. And I was going to start, I was going to frantically finish up the lab and get through KSP. So let's just focus on getting the lab done. Okay, we'll start the whole KSP thing on Monday because uh, it isn't looking like, so no we, like we're going to have a bunch of snow days. So I've got, I always have snow days built in. So we'll kind of, we'll just kind of chill. Today we'll be a little bit more chilled out than normal. How about that? Yeah. But I do want to point out, are, are we going off the camera? Uh -huh. Okay. So you still are going to have a quiz on Monday. Okay. Listen to me. You're going to have a quiz on Monday. And here's what's here's going to be the heart and soul of this quiz. And this is what's happening on this lab. So I'm going to give you, and we're going to look at like some different scenarios. And this is what I wanted you to get out of this lab. So that first titration, all that was happening at the beginning. When you count, and this is what's going to happen over here on this on the sheet that has the questions on it. Okay, late night with the dreaded chemistry teacher. So, and you get punchy if you're a teacher at night and you just come up with funny titles that you think are really amusing. The next morning, they're still amusing. So I think anyway. So I'll just say. So on number one is to calculate the initial pH of the 0.1 molar acetic acid without any buffer. So this is what you, you more and more have to see the difference between these. So on that one, all that's happening is that you have acetic acid, and this thing is ionizing into hydronium ions and anions, okay? There's no base. We have not titrated this thing at all. The only thing that's sitting in that beaker is some acetic acid. Okay, that's it, right? Don't add hydroxides to it. Don't do anything. All this thing is trying to do is ionize. And so on this rice chart, and as long as nothing is being consumed, as long as you're not titrating it with hydroxides or you're adding a strong acid to a buffered solution. <laughs> that was kind of random. My bad. My foot slipped. <laughs> it's okay. Nobody these, saw a thing. These shoes are loud no, too. No one saw no a thing, Jamie. We're good. <laughs> Okay, that was all on me. Okay, so, so if all you're dealing with is just a simple equilibrium, just work in molarity, okay? That's it. doesn't do you any good to work in moles because it's not what's happening. So you have a 0.1 molar solution, 0, 0, minus x, plus x, plus x, 0.1, x, and x. Old school. Now, what I don't want you to do is get so wrapped up in the math that you lose track of the conceptual part of what's taking place. So this whole thing is trying to equal that Ka, which is going to be that hydronium, and this is the theme for the day, that anion times the concentration of this acid. I, I cannot emphasize this enough that you understand what this means. This is what Mother Nature is going to try and do because Mother Nature is a lazy prima donna. So Mother Nature wants that Ka value of 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. And she's going to do whatever she has to do mathematically to get to that number. And if you keep that in mind, it's like, ah, this all kind of makes sense. Because if you, here's my fear, you just get wrapped in, up into going, oh, x squared over ha, and then you get wrapped up in the math side of it, and then you lose track of, of the science side of it, okay? We just use the math to describe what's happening, okay? The important part of this, the chemistry side, is you realize, why is it doing that? Oh, right. Mother Nature wants to be in equilibrium. Keep that in mind, then the math takes care of itself. But if you just focus on the math, then you lose track of what's happening with the chemistry. So understand the chemistry side of it first. And then just realize, oh, we're just using the math 
to figure out the answer, okay? Don't do the math first and then don't worry about the chemistry. It's not going to end well. So, that first answer on number one should be around three for that pH, a little bit less than that, okay? All right? So if you do that first one, that initial pH is going to be around three. Now, on two, you're going to calculate the molarity of the sodium acetate. Okay, that should be a really, really small number, okay, like 0, 0.0 something on that answer for number two, because you, you have such a small mass of sodium acetate that you added to that. Then on three, you're going to calculate the molarity of the sodium acetate uh, for buffer number two, and that molarity is going to be much higher, okay, so that molarity on number three should be around two. Okay, that's an ish, but it's going to be around two, mainly because of the fact that you added so much more sodium acetate to it. So your answer to number two is going to be 0, 0.0 something for that molarity. Your answer to number three is going to be around two. Okay, so there's an, it's exponentially more concentrated. Now, on number four, here's what you're going to, what's going to happen on number four is that now we're going to begin to add hydroxides to this thing. So you're going to look at this and go, okay, I'm going to take some hydroxides. And again, realize what's going to happen. That hydroxide is only going to react with an acid. It's not going to react with the anions. Anytime you add hydroxide ions, it's going to, it's going to react with the acid. And the only thing you're going to get out of this is water and that anion. Now, if, if, for example, on number five, calculate the, the theoretic of the acetic acid after 15 milliliters of 0.1. So what's going to happen is that we're going to look at three different scenarios. The first scenario in this reaction is the one that's non-buffered. So you can work in millimoles, you can work in moles. You are forbidden to work in molarity once you begin to look at how much is going to be consumed. So on this one, here's what you got. I did it in millimoles, okay? So I got one and a half millimoles of my base. I got two and a half millimoles of my acid, and I have no anions, okay? It's a non-buffered solution. So you assume that this starts at zero. Now, all of that hydroxide is going to get used up because that's the smallest amount. So you have minus one and a half plus one and a half, okay? And that goes to zero. This becomes one. This becomes one and a half, right? Because we're going to add over here on this side because that, you're, you're adding to that. You're making more anions. Now, at this point, you can go old school. You can go back to the Ka equation. And you can solve for H. Personally, it's much faster and much more effective if you just go straight to that pH equals pKa plus the log of your anion concentration divided by the concentration of your acid. It's just it's so much more efficient. You don't have to do the algebra. You don't have to get the X by itself. You don't have to take the negative log of that by itself. So pKa, 4.74, because of the fact that it's acetic acid. And trust me, after a while, you're just going to have the, you know you're a chemistry nerd when you know the pKa value of acetic acid is 4.74, and you don't even have to look it up. But you have crossed the threshold into chemistry nerddom. I crossed it long ago. I was, I was, I was on that border before you all were even born. So... Here's what you've got. Now, here's the bigger idea. And again, look at this. So here's this 4.74. So your anion concentration is going to be this 1.5. And your, your acid concentration is going to be 1. Now, at this point, here's what I want you to see. Step back and look at this mathematically and go, oh, that's 1.5 divided by 1. Don't be afraid to step away from this equation and look at it. Go, oh, I'm going to be taking the log of a value of one and a half. Okay? 
When I take the log of the value one and a half, is the log going to be a positive or negative value? Positive. Positive. So I know when I get my answer that my pH is going to be bigger than 4.74. If I punch something wrong into the calculator and I get a value less than 4.74, then I know I've done something wrong. Okay? Cool with that. Okay. Now, the only thing that's going to be different on 6 and 7, you're still going to have the exact same reaction of the water and the anion. In all of these, this side's going to stay the same for all three of these. You're still going to have one and a half millimoles of acid. You're still going to react that with two and a half millimoles of, oh, excuse me, one and a half millimoles of hydroxides. You're going to react that with two and a half millimoles of acid. What changes is the anion concentration. Now, you make a decision again. Are you going to work in moles or are you going to work in millimoles? I don't care. Okay, just make sure that I know which one that is. And on the assignment that I just gave back, some of you magically tried to take millimoles and subtract that from moles. Okay? I've never heard no. of Oh, no, I did look at you. Oh, you're so mean. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say the word. Did I name I it? Really it so no. <laughs> I, I never said a name. You broke yourself out. I didn't know which one of you he was talking to. <laughs> okay? But it was cool, though, what you did. Anyway. So, now, here's the deal. So, if you're going to work in millimoles, for example, that anion concentration here is going to be less than 1 if you're going to work in millimoles. Okay? It's going to be like zero, about 0 0.5. Okay? And then on this number seven, the millimoles are going to be like 45. There's going to be a huge jump because it's so much more concentrated. So here's what I want you to see. Is that your pH on number five is a little bit less than five. Wait. What? No, I thought you were talking about number six. No. Your pH on number six is a little bit more than five. And your pH on number seven eh, is kind of close to seven. Okay? So what I want you to see, and again, here is the bigger trend, is that you're in all three, you look at what you have going on. And all three of them, what they have in common is that you are, re you are reacting the same volume of acid with the same volume of base. Okay? That's what's happening. But what you're seeing is that the pH is going higher. Now, here's what I want you to look at. You're going from pH of basically 5 up to a pH of about 7. Here's the bigger idea. You're going from a pH of 5 to a pH of about 7. What's happening to the hydronium ion concentration when you go from a pH of 5 to a pH of 7? pH is, the, the hydronium ion concentration is becoming lower. lower. Now, here's what I want you to see. It's like, oh, that's cool. Why? Here's the reason why. Because of this. Okay? Because of this. So what's happening as you look at those calculations on 5, 6, and 7? Your anion concentration is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. The concentration of your acid is staying the same. Your Ka value is staying the same because Mother Nature is a lazy prima donna. So what's happening is that Mother Nature needs fewer and fewer and fewer and fewer hydronium ions here to produce the same Ka value over there because your anion concentration is getting bigger. Okay? That's the bigger idea. It's like, why does this happen? Ah, that's cool, right? Mother Nature wants the same Ka value. Anion concentration goes up. Hydronium ion concentration goes down to get the same Ka value. Okay? 
It's one of the most important things that you need to look at. Okay. Of course, this basic guy just gave you the answer to number eight, by the way. All right. Uh, when you get to these questions on the back, okay? So, you should, so hopefully you've got those mass calculations done. If you haven't, get them done, and then I'll look at them, and I'll tell you if they're right or wrong. So what you should see, and all I'm looking for, is that you quantitatively look at what happens to this change in pH. When you add a, an ammonium ion with that ammonium chloride, and then when you add the sodium acetate, okay? All I want you to tell me, hey, how much did the pH go up? How much did the pH go down? Whatever. So when you get to this question on number 15, and, and some of you are still struggling with this net ionic thing, okay? There's a couple of rules that are important when you do net ionics. Number one, you have to balance in terms of charge, okay? That's what some of you are missing. Like, if you look at the sum of the charges on the reactant side and the sum of the charges on the product side, they have to equal the same value. It might be zero, it might be negative one, it might be positive three, okay? So when you get down to the net ionic, make sure that it's called the law of conservation of charge. Charges have to be conserved just like mass does. The other thing, you eliminate the spectator ions, okay? So for example, sodium is never gonna show up on a, on a net ionic because it's never involved in the reaction. A strong, if you have a strong acid, that weak conjugate base like chlorine, nitrate, anything like that, not going to show up. It's not going to be part of the reaction. So on number 13, so I want to make sure everybody's cool with what I want on 13. So it's right, the net ionic reaction for the reaction that occurs with water and ammonium chloride. So what's happening is that you have water bunch of these things okay and you have a positive end of that molecule and you have this dome of negativity on the other end and you're going to add ammonium chloride NH4Cl is ammonium chloride soluble or insoluble soluble soluble for two reasons all ammoniums are soluble all halogens are soluble except for silver and lead, okay? So you couldn't make this thing stay together if you tried, okay? This thing is going to completely dissolve. So when it dissolves, what's going to be important is that it keeps its charge. That ammonium ion keeps a positive charge. That chloride ion keeps a negative charge, okay? So you're here in the water. Which end of the of, is that going to be attracted to? Is that ammonium ion going to go to the oxygen end of the water or the hydrogen end of the water? Oxygen. Why? Because the oxygen is negatively charged. Because it has excess electrons. So the ammonium is going to go, hello. And the chlorine, negatively charged, is going to go up there to the water. Now at this point, here's what's going to happen. What you'll see is that your pH, when you do this, should go down a little bit. The only way you can, that your pH can go down is if you increase the number of hydronium ions. It's like, ah, oh, cool. Well, how can that happen? So basically, the ammonium comes up to the water, and the water says, mind if I take one of your protons? And the ammonium goes, sure, go out. I don't care. Take some. Whatever. I got a lot of them. Okay, I got four of them. What's one? I don't care. So here's going to be your net ionic on number 13. Your ammonium ion, I don't care about the chlorine because it's not going to be part of the story. It's important, it's just not part of the story. That's going to react with the water molecule, and you're going to get hydronium ions and ammonia in H3. Now, if we do this right, it's going to balance on charge, and it does. I have a charge of 1 plus on the left side. I have a charge of 1 plus on the right side. I have the same number of hydrogens, nitrogens, and oxygens on both sides. So it's balanced on both things. Now, 
Here's the other thing to keep in mind in terms of the bigger picture, okay? You have pH probes. You don't have pOH probes. You don't have ammonium probes. You only have pH probes. So those probes only work by measuring the relative concentration of hydronium ions. Okay, that's it. It's a one-trick pony. It's a good trick. It's a one-trick pony. Okay? So when this reaction is happening, when you're taking that ammonium, and you're putting it in there, what's going to happen is that not a lot of it, okay, but what's going to happen is that there's going to be enough of it to change that pH. Some of those hydronium ions are going to defect from the ammonium, go hang out with the water molecules, increase the concentration of the hydronium ions enough to drop that pH a little bit. Okay, so when you see a drop in pH, okay, and here's the dichotomy. When your pH goes down, your hydronium ion concentration goes up. Okay, that's an inverse relationship between those two. pH goes down because your ammonium ion concentration is going up. Okay, we don't measure hydroxides. We don't have pOH probes. We only have pH probes. Now, the opposite is going to happen when you get to number 15. So on number 15, the acetate ion is going to go walk up to the water molecule and go, give me some of your water, give me some of your protons. So then you're going to generate hydroxide ions. Okay? So on 15, your anion, your acetate ion, is going to react with water, and you're going to reform the acid, and then you're going to generate OH pluses. So what's going to happen there is that you're going to see, hopefully see the pH go up. Now, the pH is going to go up because of the fact that as you increase the concentration of hydroxide ions, Mother Nature has to balance things out. So Mother Nature drops the concentration of the hydronium ions so that the product of those two values always equals the auto-ionization of, of water, which is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. So Mother Nature does that to keep things in equilibrium. Evan. How do like acid-base reactions work in not water? You can have that's when you get into Lewis acids and bases, and then those involve like pairs of electrons. We'll get into that later. Once we get into more structural things. But yeah, you can also have what's called Lewis acid bases. And then you don't have to have them with water. But we'll hold on to that thought. Okay. So when you get to uh, 17, start with a reaction, okay? I'm begging you, start with a reaction. If you don't have the reaction right, it doesn't make any sense, okay? Now, here's what's going to happen on 17. Let me give you a hint. If you look at this reaction, what's ammonia acting as? An acid or a base? Acid. It's acting as an acid. You can't find the Ka of ammonium. It doesn't exist. It's not there. Don't look in the back of the book. It's not there. You cannot find the Ka of ammonium. But what can you find? KB. You can find the Kb of ammonia. ammonia. So don't come up to me because it's Brookham. I can't find the Ka of ammonium. You're right. But you can find the Kb of ammonia. So that if you know the Kb of ammonia, how can you find the Ka of ammonia? Divide by 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. So let me give you a hint. Your answer to number 17, if you do that right, should be around 5. And your answer to number 19 should be around 9. Okay? What do you have? So not like 2.7 and 11.3. Those would be a little bit off. Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> so incredibly far off. Okay? Hi, Mr. Elliot. How's it going? Oh, well, I was good until <laughs> my star student has pHs that are off by like a Category 5 hurricane. <laughs> So, yeah. Are we on more acidic or more basic? 
I don't know, we're just so jacked up <laughs> both ways. Yeah. I was trying to use some terms. Not, it's <laughs> impressive though. Yeah, I like it. Ten out of ten. <laughs> okay. Uh, so let's talk about the quiz on Monday. There are certain points that you need to know when you're going to have a weak acid ionized reacting with this base to form the water and the anion. Okay, so here's going to be your sequence. You need to be able to figure out what's the initial pH of just the acid, okay, just that by itself. What's that? Just the pH, just by itself. Just use Ka equals x squared over that. Boom, old school. When you have the acid reacting with the hydroxide, okay, a couple of things. Let's say that this is a 0.1 molar solution of your acid. When you, if you were to look at the graph of pH versus volume, if could to figure out the initial pH, could you, if it's a weak acid, could you just take the negative log of 0.1 to get your pH if it's a weak acid? No. 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 Why? Yeah, it doesn't completely ionize. You've got to go through this whole thing. So your pH is going to start well above 1. Then it's going to go along, go along, tick, get that big spike. Okay? So as the reaction proceeds, what happens to the concentration of your acid? As you add more and more hydroxide ions, it goes down. what happens to the concentration of your acid? It's going to go down, right? You're using it up. What's going to happen to the concentration of your anions? It's going to go up. At some point, you're going to be half neutralized. When you are half neutralized, when you are half neutralized, what do you know about the pH and the pKa? pH equals your pKa. Now, that obviously only works when you have a weak acid. It doesn't work with strong acids. Why? Because there's no KA value. Because there's no KA value for strong acids. Okay? Only works with weak acids. So let's say that that equivalence point occurs at 30 milliliters. Where's the half equivalence point going to be? 15, right? So if I gave you that graph, or at least understand that concept, that when you're half neutralized, and it only works when you're half neutralized, because pH equals pKa plus the log of your anion concentration divided by the concentration of your acid. So when you're half neutralized, what do you know about these two concentrations? They are equal, and you're taking the log of log of one is zero. zero. This is why it only works when you're half neutralized and it only works with strong acid. That's a key point to understand. Hey, I'm half neutralized. pH equals pKa. Boom. Focus. Now, I promise you, you're also going to reach a point where you're going to have your acid plus your anion, excuse me, plus hydroxides. You're getting your anion plus water. Let's say that you have 10 millimoles here and you have 10 millimoles here, zero. Minus 10, minus 10, plus 10. This is all gone. This becomes 10 millimoles. Now, what is so critical about that when you completely neutralize a weak acid with hydroxides? The anion start a secondary reaction which generates OH. Fantastic. So now you need to go anion plus water yields hydroxide and the acid. Now, here's your new rice chart. If you hand this quiz in on Monday and you haven't done a secondary reaction like this, you have done something horribly wrong. Okay? You have done something horribly wrong. Now, when you do this, are you just going to use the 10 millimoles? No, that has to be molarity, okay? 
That has to be molarity. So what are you going to divide by to get the molarity? The volume of the acid, the volume of the base, or the total volume of the two? Total volume. Total volume. You're going to divide by the sum volume of everything. Okay, Aiden? Right? Okay. What's your initial concentration of your hydroxide? Zero. Zero. <laughs> I do not make this difficult. Minus x plus x plus x. Now, EMOC, your anion is acting as a base, so what are you going to have to have? My Ka or my Kb value? But you don't have the Kb value. How are you going to get the Kb value? Oh, do the one-point thing over that. <laughs> What's scary is that I know exactly what you're talking about. You're going to take 1 times 10 to the negative 14, divide that by the Ka value to get your Kb value. Okay? So there are certain things you're going to have to do in this step. Divide by the total volume. Find your Kb value. Set that equal to x squared over whatever... This is, okay? It's cool. Now, when you get x, what is your x equal? Your hydroxide ion concentration. What are you going to do next? Calculate pOH. Take the negative log of your hydroxide ion concentration, which gets you your pOH, and then what are you going to do? 14 minus your gets you your okay if you hand the quiz in on Monday and you have not done something like this you have done something horribly wrong okay so you have all of your assignments back okay if you're sketchy on this you know what the answers are you work these again and again and again until it becomes automatic. Make a flashcard and go, hey, what are my steps if it's a weak acid? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> nice. I have them all here. Okay. Maybe needs a flashcard. Flashcard, okay. flashcard. Okay. You want flashcard? Okay. All right, so I'm done. So you've got the rest of the time to finish up the lab, finish up the sheet. So this is going to be due on Monday. Let's go. When you get done, whoa, whoa, whoa. When you get done, make sure that you completely rinse out those burettes completely with lots of distilled water, okay? And then that's also the countertops are getting a little bit grungy. I'm going to have spray cleaner in there. Let's clean. Is that the, bubbles? These are the, uh, these are the scrubbing bubbles. Woo! Yay, team. Okay. All right, let's go do science.